Life is complex, but it's also beautiful. Butterflies, by their very existence, teach us about both complexity and beauty. Today, I'm visiting Butterfly Pavilion in Westminster, Colorado to explore the world of butterflies and also their invertebrate friends. Wow, this is just incredible. It's like a jungle in here, all the plants and there are butterflies everywhere just living their lives and enjoying themselves. It's just wonderful to see our fellow creatures being cared for and being let into an environment that is all theirs. We were founded in 1995, and our mission is to foster an appreciation for invertebrate creatures while educating the public about the importance of conserving habitat globally. There's no place really like Butterfly Pavilion. We're the only AZA accredited zoo that's invertebrate only. Butterfly Pavilion was founded on the idea, come see butterflies. Because they can be that gateway bug into invertebrate conservation. Other invertebrates may not be as initially charismatic. They might be scarier at first or different than what we're used to. But once we get them through the door, they learn all about all kinds of different invertebrates. This creates an, a, a greater awareness of all the different species and all of their value. Butterflies as a species are so embraceable that we're able to tell the story about all those other creatures. So invertebrates are the little things that, that run the world. They're the foundation of, upon which all life depends. They are so necessary to our lives. There is an interconnectedness between us and these creatures. We know that about 97% of described species are invertebrates. And so they're the hidden gems. So they do everything from building our soils to cleaning our water. They pollinate our crops and plants that give us food and give us oxygen. They really shape our world. I was amazed to discover how crucial invertebrates are to sustaining life on the planet. I can't imagine what life would be like without them. If we were to disappear, it'd be a little blip on the radar screen of the planet's biodiversity. But if the invertebrates were to disappear, all life as we know it would end within a few months. Pollinators are declining at a very fast rate. We're losing thousands of species every year as we transform rainforests into um, agricultural fields for, for livestock. There is so much life on this planet. I guess I've never really considered invertebrates. They are a mystery to me. I wonder who they are and if each individual is unique. They look different than us, right? They might seem so foreign to us, so different, so weird. No matter their difference, they all have this beautiful individual life, this story to tell. Even spiders, which have been such a source of fear, can be cute and charismatic and clumsy. For bees, I didn't know they took naps in the middle of the afternoon, or that they cuddled up in a flower and, and took a little siesta with their, with their friends and cuddled together. Butterflies um, can range from shy to social. Um, they might love flying around uh, people, landing on them frequently, and some might be totally shy and cryptic, hiding in the forest most of the time. The diversity of personalities of these little friends is remarkable. It got me wondering if there is more to their little world. Are they conscious of their existence? They must know fear. If they're afraid, they run away, right? So they're fearful because they want to live. They have this sentence about them, this ability to recognize that they're on this planet for a purpose. Some of them are incredibly bright, and you can train them to do things. So that indicates a level of intelligence that most people would ne never attribute to an invertebrate. They're very different from us. We ascribe probably lesser traits to them than they might otherwise deserve. I would argue that they do deserve. It's important for us to see them as individuals who have a purpose on this planet. Everyone is passionate about their own life. It's remarkable that even the smallest among us are sentient and intelligent individuals. I know that one of their most important roles in the ecosystem is pollination. But what exactly is pollination? 
Pollination is a form of symbiosis, so it's a mutually beneficial relationship that occurs between animals and plants. Plants and invertebrates are, are very important to one another. They're helping plants reproduce, grow. There's many animals that fit within the pollination category, but most important pollinators are actually going to be invertebrates. Out of every three bites of food that we eat, one bite is a result of pollinators. And they're some of the best bites, so chocolate, coffee, things we really love are thanks to uh, pollinators. Our lives are very intertwined with them, and so we need to start seeing them as individuals that are important, their lives are important, their roles in, in this fragile ecosystem is important. So invertebrates truly do play a crucial role in all of our lives. All this talk of pollination reminded me of an experience I once had with a special pollinator you've probably met. 30 years ago, when my husband and I visited Pacific Grove, we came upon monarch butterflies and they just flew everywhere. It was one of the most meaningful experiences of my life. Butterflies are often what we call an indicator species because they're just so closely tied to their environment. Monarch butterflies are some of the most iconic invertebrates on the planet. They're very charismatic, they're beautiful. They're such a beautiful being, right? Their stunning orange and black coloring is just one of the many things that make monarch butterflies so special. There's actually a reason behind that coloration. Often in nature, that orange and black color, it's actually a form of warning. They live on milkweed, and milkweed is a poisonous plant. Plants are, you know, chemical factories. Not every kind of insect can eat every kind of plant. But the caterpillars eat that milkweed, and they're able to incorporate those poisons into their own system. A bird that eats a monarch butterfly might immediately throw it up. And so they use that as a defense against predators. So they're brightly colored as a warning to predators, don't eat me because I'm poisonous. So milkweed plays a vital role in the monarch butterfly's nutrition and defense. I was curious to find out if they had any other uses for the plant. The monarchs need their milkweed in order to rear their young. Butterflies can be so picky on what plants they lay their eggs in. They will only lay their eggs on the milkweed because their caterpillars are so picky on what they eat. Mama monarch will usually only lay one egg per plant in order to reduce competition for her young. But if their host plant is not available, they will not even lay eggs. Wow, monarch butterflies sure know what they need. After exploring the symbiosis between monarchs and milkweed, my curiosity was piqued to uncover yet another fascinating dimension of their existence. They also complete one of the most incredible migrations in the animal kingdom. It can be a journey that takes them upwards of 3,000 miles from Canada all the way down to central Mexico. They migrate in four generations, three generations up to Canada, and one generation from Canada all the way back down to Mexico that overwinter and then start the whole process over again. Monarchs rely on a lot of different environmental cues to complete that journey. They are coming to the place that their great-grandparents overwintered in without ever having been there. Even though we think of butterflies as frail and delicate, we should start seeing them as resilient and strong. Monarch butterflies have inspired us for centuries. They mean so much to so many people. So native peoples of Mexico have tracked the monarch migration for centuries. And every year, the monarch migration coincides with Dia de los Muertos, or Day of the Dead. The streets um, in the towns surrounding the monarch biosphere are decorated with monarchs as symbols. They're celebrated um, in the clothing, in the arts in the walls, in poetry and literature of the area, which is such a beautiful way of representing butterflies and connecting to nature. The migration of the monarch butterfly is a marvel of the natural world. Surely a trip like that doesn't come easily. So imagine you're a monarch performing this very long journey. You absolutely need fuel. You need those sugars from nectar um, to power that flight. The loss of habitat 
makes their migratory journey so much more difficult. Imagine closing down half of the gas stations on a highway on a long road trip. There's no place to stop. There's, there's no food along the way. There's no hotels. The journey becomes a lot more difficult. How would you survive that? And that's what's happening to the migratory monarch right now. Last summer, they were listed as endangered. And we have to take that very seriously. So there's two populations. One is west of the Continental Divide, and they overwinter in California. So they were down from millions to, a couple years ago, 20,000, over a 99% decline. And then there's the eastern population, which overwinters in Mexico. The eastern monarchs saw declines of around 80%. We're losing our little friends, our little invertebrates, at such an alarming rate. Of course, monarchs are important pollinators, and they're important parts of our ecosystem. Because they are so critical to our life, we are intertwined. So they're one species that we can look at, and we can tell their story and say, this is the story of so many others. If they don't survive, we don't survive. The rapid decline of migratory monarchs is deeply concerning. The importance of conservation has never been more evident. It's a tendency to see humans as destroyers. If we choose to do so, we can really be creators and we can be partners with nature. Our job here at Butterfly Pavilion is to educate people in the hopes that we can improve behaviors. When you learn about them, you're inspired by them, but you also treat them differently. We as a, as, a, as a community and as a society have got to embrace our responsibilities there. Nature can be healthy and accessible and wonderful and also in our own individual yards too. It's not very hard for everyone to attract butterflies to your yard. If you build it, they will come. When you plant those pollinator districts, the pollinators do start to come back. If you know you're in the monarch migratory path, one of the best things you can do is plant um, native flowers to fuel them through that long journey or plant milkweed for their caterpillars. And really creating a habitat for these amazing, beautiful beings. But I think it's something simple that everybody can do. So our actions do matter. Food consumption is huge. What we eat matters. 90% of the agriculture out there goes to feed animals and livestock. So to the extent people can reduce their meat consumption, it's going to help the planet as well. I'm truly inspired and empowered. From our backyards to our plates, there is so much each of us can do to make a difference. It's a great opportunity for everyone to do their part and contribute. Finding what works for you and what is sustainable for you. It may be a small footprint, but all the footprints together have a big influence. But I have hope, and I have hope that, that we're going to educate people, we're going to turn things around, people are going to realize the importance of invertebrates and other creatures that we share this planet with, and people are going to work to do something to conserve and, and recover our planet. There, there is absolutely hope, and conservation really is in all of our hands. What we're doing today is leading to something great tomorrow. My time at Butterfly Pavilion has inspired me. Truly, we are part of a complex and beautiful system where all is connected. These little guys are out there doing the work that we need to survive. Without pollinators, we would not have any food. We are not alone on this planet. We share everything with every other creature. They are our partners in life. <laughs>